My name is Bill Adberg. Well, I got started in the leather business in the, the late to mid the 1960s. It was almost by, uh, by accident. I, I started the leather shop in 1968 and I was there for a total of uh, 10 years. I've been in the leather business since that time. Uh, I'm 65 years old. I started out when I was 21. Now, we were hippies, but we we're business people too. Clients ran the gamut from, you know, the poor hippies that would, would come in and you know, want to outfit themselves in the uh, the latest uh, fringe to, uh, uh, you know, some uh, wealthy doctors and lawyers that would come in and would want to buy some of our higher end things. On a number of occasions, we did have some famous clientele. Uh, Leonard Nimoy stopped in Milwaukee and bought a pair of sandals. He did have pointed ears and, and I had to make sandals that were pointed, but uh, he was a very nice person. The local yippies it was a radical group at that time and had a, uh, their house on Warren Avenue. And the owner of the home was an elderly woman that they convinced to go down to City Hall and get a permit to close the street and to have a little block party, which was an unusual event at that time. And a stage was set up and music was played. And, uh, you know, eventually the police came and chased us all away because, you know, some illicit drugs and marijuana was being used and the crowd got broke up. But some of the business people that were at this event, uh, myself included, uh, thought that uh, this would be a good idea to have a festival on Brady Street, allowing people to sell uh, their arts and crafts. And shortly after we started up the Brady Street Festival, which became uh, instantly successful, I had an opportunity to work as a designer for a local production company. It was called Western Leather Production Corporation, and they were uh, an outfit that was part tannery and part uh, uh, manufacturer, and they had been in business for close to 100 years, and I was offered a position as a designer there. Cutting dies, turnout tools, uh, automatic folders, uh, power hammers, uh, 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 skiving and, and splitting. After I left Western Leather uh, and transitioned into the uh, pushcart business, I, I th think I was at Grand Avenue for about um, about three and a half or four years. Business was just really good. It just kept on rolling and rolling and rolling. When I first started, I thought I was going to get there, be there for maybe a week or two. I learned years ago, it's not how much cash that flows, it's how much cash that sticks. And I uh, turned my attention to the arts and crafts uh, fair business. Purses, small accessories, small wallets, uh, checkbook covers, credit card cases, and things that I always looked at it, you had to analyze your market, and I always looked at it that, you know, 85, 90% of the, the customers at the craft fairs were women, so this is what I would gear my line to. In my 1,500 square foot downtown studio space, I would be able to hunker down over the winter and make the products that I would need to sell at the, sh at, at the shows. I've been a one-man operation. It's, it's sort of like being a farmer. You, you get to the arts and crafts fair and you think, okay, how's the weather going to be? If the weather's bad, you're not going to make any money, you know? If the economy's bad, you're not going to make any money. Now, if the weather's good and the economy's good and the customers show up, you're going to make some money. You know? But it's always a bit of a, of a gamble. I'm, I'm a bit of a, a dinosaur, so to speak, but I, I think there's a real opportunity for people who want to buy quality leather goods at a very reasonable price. I really never uh, thought about it in the beginning, but I fell in love with making leather goods. I just fell in love with it.